Thank you for joining us today. My name is Guha Bharadwaj and I'm a senior marketing manager here on the Connect All team. I'll be your moderator for this session. I'm joined by my colleagues Bharat Venkatesh and Jonathan McCowan. Jonathan is a Connect All product expert and will be your presenter for this webinar. Today we're going to show you how you can integrate Jira and Microsoft Team Foundation Server using the Connect All integration platform. Before we dive into the demo, I'd like to mention that this session should last around 30 minutes with the last five minutes or so being reserved for Q&A. The GoToWebinar window has a questions panel into which you can type out any questions you have for us. Uh, Bharat's taking notes of these and we'll pull them up towards the end of the session. We shall also be sending you a recording of this webinar via email. May I ask if you can share this with your network or anyone else you think might benefit from this. You can also check out the recordings of our previous webinars on the website at connectall.com. With that, I shall hand it over to Jonathan. Jonathan, over to you. All right, thank you very much. Um, yes, as we said, uh, we will be doing a ConnectAll demonstration today between uh, Jira and Microsoft TFS. Uh, also, um, I will actually be using the online version of TFS, which is VSTS, but they behave uh, basically the same from the standpoint of integration. Um, so without further ado, uh, during this webinar, we will be talking a little bit about the, uh, the blessing and the curse of information in today's age. We'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, bridging the gaps. And then we will also talk about, uh, then we'll also provide a connect all demonstration About me, uh, I am a senior solutions architect at ConnectAll. I have a, a small background in a computer science uh, and then uh, a background also in customer service and trying to um, trying to kind of bridge that gap and, and bring computer science and kind of use that to um, to work with customers on a on a technical level. Uh, and then I'm also kind of an efficiency enthusiast. I, I love integration. Uh, it's a thing that I believe very strongly in. And, um, you know, I like uh, integrating not only uh, the corporate world and helping people see efficiency that way, but I also uh, also take take uh, great pleasure in trying to help people uh, make their own lives more efficient through the use of technology. So information today is basically self-service. If you don't believe me, then go Google that. Uh, you know, uh, out there, there's so much information in this world, uh, thanks to the uh, thanks to the internet these days. And you know, before you even approach a company on anything, you can watch a video of how they do it on YouTube. Uh, you can solve your own home improvement projects by watching videos on YouTube. You know, um, I've got a whole number of, of small do-it-yourself things that I've been able to perform at home. Uh, thanks to just watching YouTube or reading a blog or reading some sort of guide on it. You know, we can, you can browse a company's website, figure out everything that they do uh, before you even contact them, trying to uh, make sure that they can even solve your problem before they've even had a chance to discuss it with you. Um, you can read a public white paper. You know, many people put out white papers uh, so that you can read more in-depth things about certain areas. You can find blogs about your chosen fields of study. Um, you know, plenty of technical stuff out there, plenty of opinions out there. There's a blog for everything we can find. Or you could listen to industry-related podcasts from subject matter experts. So there's a ton of information that we can get out there for free uh, just by going to Google and doing a search for what we may be interested in. So all this is really great. There's, all a, there's a lot of information. But the downside is that we're kind of faced with information overload. So, uh, you know, we have all this stuff at our fingertips, but really the result is that we're kind of in too many places at once. Uh, we've got so many things to do. We're always so busy. Uh, we don't have time to do lots of things because we've got to use that time to do lots of other things. <clears throat> so in the ever-changing world, um, <clears throat> especially in technology, but, you know, in many other areas as well, it requires a large amount of committed time to do research. Uh, and then in the, the software world, it takes a large amount of time to you know, really learn how to develop and really set aside time to develop things. Uh, administrative activities 
can really just kind of be mundane and monotonous and you know who um i'm i speak for myself here but um you know uh I'd much rather dig into something rather than having to do all the administrative activities. Um, I know I don't speak for everyone there, but uh, you know, it, it uh, whenever those administrative activities take away from our time to research and our time to develop, it can become a hassle and a strain uh, to do those. And then our days can be full of meetings, leaving even less time uh, devoted to, uh, for deep thought. There have been a number of studies, and a, you can find a number of, of blog posts on this as well. Um, about uh ideas between different different schedules different schedules uh where you have like a, a a manager schedule and a maker schedule for instance uh where you just sometimes you just need time for deep thought uh, or even on a manager schedule where you just need to set aside time where it, whether it be a day or whether it be a week to just break away and, and devote some time to deep thought so what we really need is we really need help uh in trying to make sense of all this and trying to balance all of the things that we have to do today. So um, even though we need this help, we don't have time to really get in depth and learn about the things that are supposed to help us. You know, we, we want help, but uh, if, you, if you spend a lot of time trying to uh, implement something to help you, well, then you've kind of negated the whole purpose, right? You've, uh, you've spent more time trying to figure out how to solve the problem than, you know, solving the problem would have saved you. So uh, our solutions for solving this problem really need to be easy to understand. They need to be easy to set up, configure. Uh, they need to be easy to maintain. It's a big quality of life thing. Uh, and then they need to be easy to scale. You know, it's, it's easy to put something in whenever it's small, but then as, you know, it, it gets popular or you find a lot of use for it and you say, well, I can put this in other areas too. You know, it needs to be able to e easily move on to those additional areas. Kind of related to all this, uh, I've got this book down here at the bottom um, from uh, Don't Make Me Think, Revisited from Steve Krug. And one of my favorite things in there is, you know, he, he mentions in there that uh, we're, we're so busy now and we're so, uh, when we go to a website, you know, if we can't find it within, if we can't find something that helps us within a few seconds, we leave that website and we go to something else. You think about all the Google searches that you hit, get, uh, all the hits that you get, if you can't find something almost immediately, you hit the back button and then you go find something else. So I believe, uh, you know, this all supports that idea that, that we really need uh, to make something easy to understand, set up, maintain, and scale. Work also exists in many different places in software. So we have, um, you know, we, we can do all of our planning in one tool, we can do all of our backlog management in another tool, all of our development happens somewhere else, then we have somebody else using QA, then we have somebody else doing ITSM work. Um, so we, we're kind of all over the place uh, in, in small organizations and large organizations. Uh, we have a tool pretty much for everything. We have some tools that try to do it all, and then we have some tools that are more specific to specific needs. So in this case, um, you know, uh, this is kind of harkens back to the administrative activities that I was talking about a second ago, is that, you know, you've done your work, you've done your development, and now you've got to go track everything you did for your development. So now you need two tools, uh, likely, to, you know, one to, to do all your development and one to go track it so that other people can see what you're doing. And then you might have a third tool then uh, that, that then bubbles back up to, you know, your management. Uh, or the people doing the project planning and stuff. So we've got all these different tools for all these different purposes that we have to log in and keep track of things in. And then, um, so we have context shifting between those tools and uh, then time spent, of course, logging things in each of those tools. So what you can do is you can hire a robot to do it for you, a robot su such as ConnectAll. Uh, so using something like integration between those tools, you can of course slash the manual effort that you need to do. You no longer need to open up one tool, look at a bug, and then go into your QA tool and then put that bug into that QA tool or vice versa. You know, you don't have to manually do that. You don't have to manually open two tools to do that. Uh, by hiring that robot to do you, you can uh, improve your time to value, of course, because you don't have to waste that time doing that manual effort. Uh, it can provide immediate feedback. You don't have to wait for a meeting to get any sort of feedback on the things that you're moving across systems. Uh, that has greatly enhanced collaboration <clears throat> because you do get those immediate that immediate feedback on what you're doing or any questions that you may have. You can immediately get answers on them. 
And it, uh, it really lets people work in the tools where they feel like they offer the most value. Developers can work in development tools and they don't have to go, uh, go get into other tools that kind of break their chain of thought. Uh, <clears throat> project managers can work in their project management tools uh, without having to get into the weeds and get into the, the development tools. Um, <clears throat> it also, of course, reduces human error because whenever the robot is sitting there, uh, you know, scanning through all the fields and all the things that are should be synchronized, uh, it's just going to copy what's in one and go place it in another. You don't have to worry about spelling mistakes or anything like that between the tools from that manual entry. So Connect All has minimal impact. Uh, it's, uh, there's no need to disrupt your existing systems or plugins. It is code free. You just point and click for the configuration. And of course, it's flexible as well. It can integrate, integrate cloud systems, on-premise applications, uh, and then it, it itself can be a cloud or an on-premise deployment. And then we have support for well over 35 applications and tools. Most of the configuration is UI driven, so you actually only spend a little bit of time going in and configuring things. And then most of the work happens in the background. Again, it's a big quality of life thing. You set it up, and then ideally, you forget about it. Uh, you don't want to have to be going in there and, and managing it all the time. So then that image that we had before ends up looking something a little bit like this. Uh, so we can have, you know, our planning tool. Uh, we can then uh, decompose in there and then send what needs to go over into our backlog. Uh, any incidents can come in from another <clears throat> from another tool into our backlog. And then, um, you know, same thing, our test management or another tool, our code changes. All of this stuff can flow freely across systems without any interaction from uh, or without any action needed from us to get it from one place to the next. And so with that, I will get into our ServiceNow to TFS integration. So here I have Connect all set up. And here's just a splash page that, that I'll go through in a little bit to talk a little bit about uh, how we set all this up and how we get it running. Uh, but first of all, let's just do a brief little demonstration. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm working in JIRA, and I want my tasks to go from one system to another system. You know, I need to get my tasks uh, out of my, um, you know, I have people working in my backlog, man doing backlog management in JIRA, and I need to get those tasks over to developers working in TFS, or as I said earlier, in this case, VSTS, which is just hosted. Uh, so I'm going to come in here, and we are going to create a brand new task. Okay, so let me make sure here we choose a task object. And then we're going to say a user needs to be able to integrate tasks for enhanced collaboration and time to value. Okay, and we're going to say um, it needs to be easy to set up. All right, and then we're going to uh, I think this is pretty pretty important, so we're going to set that as a high priority. Uh, and then I think that's really all I need to do to fill this out. I don't have any other required fields. So now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create. Okay, so now what ConnectAll is doing, again, there's no plugin or anything like that, but ConnectAll is uh, going to pull both JIRA and, uh, and TFS. Uh, about once every minute, and then it will, once on its next poll, it will see that there is a new task here in JIRA, and it will go and replicate that over in TFS. So we can see here over in the uh, Connect All dashboard, I had that monitoring, uh, we can see that there is a new task that has been created over here. So if I go into TFS, and then if I re-execute my query here, I can see that we have a brand new task that says a user needs to be able to integrate tasks for load that for enhanced collaboration and time to value, of course. We see that my description came across as well. Uh, my priority, I had a, a priority set as, as high, and that correlated with the number two over here. Uh, it wasn't number one, my number one is very high, or is the highest priority. Uh, so now that this is over here working, I can do a few things. Uh, let's say that, uh, so I'm going to pick this up. Let's say I'm a developer. I'm going to pick up this task. 
I'm going to say active. Right. Let's say uh, we'll leave a comment here. Let's say uh, I can get to work on investigating Connect All. And then uh, let's see here. We'll go ahead and save that. All right, uh, and then I'm gonna, yep, so I moved it to active, add comment, and then we'll just give that a minute, and then uh, we should see an update flow back as well. Again, I have my connect on dashboard, and I can either sit here and watch it if I really like to, uh, or, you know, in the case that you're actually coming in here and wanting to do tests on the fly, you can hit that sync now button, and that will actually flow back. So we should see an update come back. There it goes right there. So then I can come over here into JIRA, refresh this and I can see that my status moved to in progress and I can see that there was a comment added as well I'm going to add this picture of a frog okay a little picture of frogs red-eyed tree frogs and so that will come across as well again I'll go ahead and push that through for the sake of time but really the important thing here is that we can see, um, you know, that we can have collaboration going back and forth between each system. Uh, so, you know, somebody changes something in JIRA, uh, that'll flow over to JIRA. Then we change something in TFS and that flows over to TFS as well. Oh, I forgot to save right here. There we go. Uh, and then we can, um, so we get a lot of really instantaneous feedback going back and forth between the two systems uh, so that, uh, you know, whoever originated the task in JIRA can ask questions. Uh, the person who's actually assigned the task over in, in uh, TFS, and they can just, um, you know, they don't have to pick up the phone, they don't have to swivel chair, they don't have to write an email. Uh, the people working in JIRA can uh, just work in JIRA, and then the people working in TFS can just work in TFS. Here we see that this uh, attachment just came over quite nicely. Um, so let's actually talk a little bit about how we set something like this up. So again, here I have my uh, my summary screen and I'll just drill down into that just a little bit. And we'll kind of walk briefly through each of the tabs and talk about how we can actually set this up. Uh, so the first thing we need to do, of course, is we need to, uh, <clears throat> we need to be able to connect to both JIRA and VSTS. So the first thing we need is we need a URL to connect to both of them. And then we, we also authenticate by using a username and password. You don't have to necessarily use the admin user in either tool. I'm using that for convenience, but you can make your own user as long as they have uh, read, write, and update permissions. Uh, and then over here in VSTS, you actually don't see a username and password because I'm using an authentication token over here in VSTS. Uh, so um, I just put I just plug that into my password and we're all good over there. Uh, then here on the next screen we can uh, we can set our scope. So my high, I have my high level scope set to um, my project here in Jira, and then my project over here in VSTS. We can see that my uh, then we further uh, refine our scope by choosing an object type an issue type. In this case, I'm going to select a task from JIRA and a task from VSTS. Uh, we do support all issue types in JIRA and all issue types, uh, or all work item types rather, in VSTS. Now, if I wanted to, I can get into some more advanced properties as well. Uh, if I wanted to further refine my scope, I can put in something like a poll query here, and I could say, you know, status is not equal, or we can say is not uh is not new or something like that uh, so this is actually jql and we can actually put in a jql to um and, th and it'll append this jql into our jira query uh, so it will we'll then um whenever connect all asks jira for any tasks it will filter out any of the tasks that are not new um, then same thing we can do this something similar over here in tfs to refine our queries as, to refine our results as well. Uh, down here, I have control over whether or not I want to do single um, creation, like single direction creation or uh, bidirectional creation. Same thing with updates. So in this case, I have creation happening both ways. So if I created a task in TFS, it would also create over in Jira. 
but I do have the option of just unchecking that, and then I have uh, one-way creation. In this case, it would be from JIRA to TFS, but not the other way around. As far as the mapping itself, so I had just a very simple mapping set up, but what I hope that you can see from a, a simple mapping like this is that we can still get a lot of value out of just something small. Um, so with this mapping, we were able to synchronize the summary. Of course, we have to have a title um, whenever we synchronize, and that just gives us the basic idea of what we're synchronizing. And then we synchronize the description as well to drill down into the details a little bit more. Uh, then I had my priority, as I showed earlier. Uh, so we can come in here and we can see uh, priority. I can map the, each of these priority values to their corresponding values on the TFS side. And it doesn't matter that I have five over here in JIRA and then I only have four different values in TFS uh, because I can just set up this one exception right here where my lowest priority is just gonna map to four. And I just have it going in one direction so that um, Connect all knows what to do with the lowest priority if it finds it in JIRA. But of course, if it sees four in TFS, it will set it back to low. So there's no conflict there. Another interesting thing as well is that um, our status mapping, you know, I showed it going from new to in progress. So going from new to in progress, we can, um, uh, we don't have to do anything special there. Uh, we automatically pull up the states from JIRA, even though we know that JIRA is a workflow type um, type system. Uh, we automatically pull up those states, and then all we have to do is just select those states like we would with any other single select. And now we do have to type our states over here into the TFS side, but again, there's nothing special that we have to do uh, to, to get those states to synchronize with each other. As you saw earlier, I moved it from new to active, and then it just flowed just fine. And then finally, we can see attachments. Uh, I showed the attachment going from TFS to JIRA. And then lastly, we can see comments as well. Um, my comments flowed from one system to the other. So with just this small little setup right here, we can see a lot of collaboration, a lot of back and forth between those two systems um, that, again, prevent you from having to call somebody or email somebody or turn your chair around uh, to go ask them a question. You can just work in the tool where you feel like you're offering the most value, uh, and then just stick with that tool and kind of keep your context intact. Uh, one thing I, I need to mention as well is that it was very easy to actually set this up. Uh, so all I had to do is I just selected one field from over here on the left. These are all my JIRA fields. And then I selected one field over here on the right. These are all my VSTS fields. Uh, this is, of course, scoped to just tasks. So if I wanted to do something like synchronize my creation date, I could do click create it over here, and I can pick create it over here, and then I can click that plus button there, and just like that, I have a new mapping down here at the bottom. So um, pretty pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, all on one screen, we can just uh, map things as we need to map them. All right, and so that's pretty much it for the demonstration. And now I'd like to open it up for any questions, if you have any questions. Hey, John. Um, let me just take the questions for you. I see already two questions. Um, one of the question is, um, would Connectol change a process flow in order to synchronize information? Um, it doesn't have to. So um, the idea is that ConnectAll should uh, should make your process more efficient. Um, so uh, you can, uh, you know, there there can be a little bit of analytics that goes on. We do offer uh, as part of our evaluation and our deployment processes. Uh, we we can sit in on those sessions with you uh, to help you uh, analyze your environment and to see um, to see how we might uh, put ConnectAll in there to help you out. Uh, so part of that is, uh, you know, we'll we'll look at the workflows that you have for each system, see where things line up, uh, see where things don't. Uh, we can offer suggestions um, based off of our experience in the in the integration world, and uh, you know, um, um, you know, make any suggestions that uh, that that may help improve your process. So um, yes, it 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 may 
change your process, but in most cases it doesn't. Uh, it really just kind of depends on your specific situation. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, the second question is, um, does it also support Jira data center and Jira software? Uh, yes, so our Jira uh, adapter does support um, uh, all of the different editions of Jira. Uh, so what we're looking at when we look at Jira is we're just looking at the back end. We're looking at uh, basically our issue tables. Uh, and so we're, um, you know, if you, if you create an incident or a bug, uh, it doesn't really matter where you created it in Jira. It belongs on the bug table in a certain project. Uh, so whether that came from Service Desk or whether it came from Jira software or whether it came just from Jira core, um, you know, they all go into that uh, kind of the same back end table, and then that's that's what we're actually looking at. Okay. Uh, but the short answer is yes, we do support all of those. Okay. So we have another last question for the, for the session today. Um, the question is, um, what are the deployment options of ConnectAll? Um, I'm, uh, I'll need a little bit of clarification, but uh, I, I will speak about uh, ConnectAll itself, um, where you can install it. Um, so we can install it on Windows. Uh, we can install it on uh, Linux as well. Uh, so it's uh, it's pretty f flexible as far as those two environments. Um, I have heard of people doing you know manual installations, uh, doing um, you know running some scripts and then and running it and installing it on a Mac if you really wanted to get into something like that. Uh, we of course also um, we support Docker, um, and then we also can you know install on premise or we can install it uh, you know in uh, in cloud hosting as well. So if you're using something like AWS, we can install it there just fine as well. Uh, so we're pretty flexible with with where you put it. Uh, it is um, it's running on a web server. It's running on Apache Tomcat. So um, all the configuration is done through Tomcat. So wherever you can install that. Okay, great. So thanks for answering that. So that's all we had. We had about three questions from the audience today. That's great. Um, so I think uh, that's pretty pretty much that we have covered for the session. Um, Go ahead. Okay. You want to jump in? Sure. Sure. Thanks for that demo, Jonathan. That was very insightful. Um, in case you missed any part of the session, we should be sending you a recording of the session via email. Uh, if you want a deeper dive into ConnectAll based on what you saw and heard today, uh, you can head over to connectall.com and sign up for a demo. Uh, you can also check out the other upcoming webinars over the rest of the month and the rest of the year uh, as we announce those. Uh, and feel free to share those with your colleagues and network. That's it for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you.